Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's take a look at this from a graphical perspective because I think it's pretty exciting and pretty interesting. I don't know if you think that way, but I certainly do. So here we had a sphere, and we saw that in the previous videos, that started out at 300 Kelvin. We placed it out in space far away from the sun where it would not be receiving any additional energy. And assuming that the sphere had a radius of 20 centimeters and made out of copper so that it had a mass of 289 kilograms, how long would it take for it to reach to its half temperature? How long would it take for it to radiate out the heat so that it would not be down to 150 Kelvin and so forth? So what I did here is I put it on a graph. I said, well, here you could see not how long it would take for it to reach that point, but you know it already takes a very long time, but what would be the rate of the energy radiation? And you can see that when we start out at 300 Kelvin, it would be radiating out 231 joules per second. Of course, that's equal to watts. Then when it cools down to 250 Kelvin, now the rate of putting out energy would be down to 111 watts or 111 joules per second. At 200 Kelvin, it would be down to 45 joules per second. And at 150 Kelvin, the halfway point between 300 and zero, it would be down to 14.4 joules per second, which is way less than what it started with at 300 Kelvin. So you can see that this equation, the seven Boltzmann equation, where the amount of heat being radiated is a function of t to the fourth power, you can see that it drops very, very fast as the temperature diminishes down to a lower, lower temperature. At 100 Kelvin, the radiation would be down to 2.9 joules per second. At 50 Kelvin, it would be down to 0.2 joules per second. And if it was just one Kelvin above absolute zero, and let's say the surrounding was at absolute zero, then the rate would be at 2 times 10 to the minus 8, which is 20 billionth of a joule per second at, uh, at 1 Kelvin. So you can see that the rate at which heat is radiated from an object in space diminishes quite a bit as the temperature gets quite a bit lower. It is much faster at high temperatures and much, much more slowly at low temperatures. And I thought when I drew this graph that it was quite an amazing result. I wasn't expecting that, but again, I kind of should have when I looked at the Stefan Boltzmann equation. But now at least you have a nice pictorial of the rate of energy radiation of an object in space based upon this graph here. And that's how we understand.